So uh, up next, coming to us all the way from the Lone Star State, Mr. Uh, James Benham, uh, JB Knowledge, is going to share with us some of the exciting things that they're doing, and not just AR, but lots of different stuff. So take it away there, James. Test, test, test. There you go. Howdy. All right. Try it again. Howdy. Howdy. There we go. Thank you. I am from Texas. You bring a Texan in, we got to start with a howdy. I do appreciate that. Any Texas A&M Aggies in the room, I have to ask? Oh, none. It's a lonely place in San Francisco. All right. I know. You know, Texans don't come this way because of the tax rate. It actually is. Anyway, sorry. Bad joke. 13.3% state income tax. So let's talk about what we're doing in AR. Um, I'm James Benham. I own JB Knowledge. We have 104 software developers uh, that work on solutions in the construction and insurance business. I've been writing code since I was 11. Uh, started this company when I was 21, out of my dorm room. Uh, that was about 13 and a half years ago. We build solutions. We've got about 515 GCs from Dubai to Hawaii, northern Canada, down to the Caribbean that use our solutions. We got our start in the estimating and bidding space. Um, so it, it's really been a fun ride in construction, uh, but a difficult one. Uh, this is a Get to my development team, so we've got a whole bunch of coders, a bunch of nerds. Uh, really, really fun to have a lot of really good software developers and to have a company led by software developers for software developers all about developing software. Um, we have clients all over the place that give us some really fun stuff. I'll start with a survey. We do a, a construction technology survey every year. We survey uh, the biggest companies on the, on the planet on what they're using in tech. I'm going to keep it because we have 15 minutes today. To, to just this particular space, and is that are they using BIM? Because it really, you can't really have good AR unless you're using BIM, right? I mean, you, you have to have the model. Uh, I get a lot of phone calls, can we have augmented reality? And I say, okay, well, where's your model? What model? Okay, well, then no, you can't have AR, right? You can't, you can't I'm sorry. We have to model it first, and that's always the first step. So are they using them? And by the way, BN Builders is a client of ours. Uh, they use SmartBid, which is really a, a, our flagship product for bidding. Um, so thank you, thank you for your business. Um, but uh, Autodesk revenue, Autodesk and Trimble just own the BIM space in, in construction. I mean, really, there's some other players, but the dominant solutions. But the, the interesting point is that about 43% of our companies are actively using BIM. So the, the time is really ripe for AR in construction, finally. Uh, and this is what BIM looks like for most starters in the construction business. Uh, I did this in 15 minutes as an example for all the estimators that I talked to of how they can actually use BIM. Right, so I, I went in and, and took a plan file from our smart bid plan room, and I imported it into uh, SketchUp, and then I traced on it, and in about 15 minutes, I had a 3D quantity takeoff of this building, because SketchUp allows you to set scale and then draw the building and then model it. And so 15 minutes later, I had a 3D quantity takeoff. This is what BIM feels like for most starters. And then you move on to actual quantities, and then you move to really fun new systems like a symbol. And the symbol's a really exciting BIM solution uh, for, for the construction business, it's a year old, it's out of, out of Houston, Texas, so I'm thrilled because it's a Texas company. But they actually take BIM models and they, they actually make them available on the web because the biggest, 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 biggest problem we have, and I'll tell you this, about 82,000 subs a week use our software. The biggest problem we have is accessibility in the construction business. That is by far, and I don't mean accessibility by uh, seeing impaired or, or hearing impaired, I mean literally their ability to access and use technology. It's one of the biggest challenges we had. And for me, the real salient point in my life was when my daughter started using my iPhone at the age of one. And that really was a, a changing point for me that, my goodness, uh, if she can use this software at the age of one, then I need to develop software that one-year-olds can use because then maybe my construction field workers will be able to use it, right? And, and I'm not saying they're like one-year-olds. I'm just saying if you develop to that level of technology utilization and that ease of use, then you're likely to get much broader adoption. And that's been the big problem, is we expected subs to buy the BIM software, which is really expensive, and learn how to use it to view the model. And what AR does is it brings it down to the most base level. You turn the camera on. And that's what we're excited about. Assemble brings quantities and BIM models out into web browsers so subs don't have to download and install the BIM software. It's a fantastic solution. And so um, the exciting news is that 45D60, that's you know, time, cost, facility management BIM, is happening right now in the business. And we're really excited about that because that means that AR and VR can actually happen because we have this prerequisite. We have the model. 
right? The real sad thing is that construction companies spend one quarter of their other industry counterparts on technology. We have a major, now BN Builder is an exception, DPR is an exception as well. Uh, there are some major contractors that are the rare exception, but they spend on average one to one and a half percent of corporate revenue on technology. The insurance business, which we also work in, spends between six and eight percent of corporate revenue on technology. So we're seriously underspending in AEC. We, we have to get over this hurdle and understand that, uh, that more and more people are going mobile and cloud-based, that built big contractors, good contractors for sophisticated owners are building virtually and then physically and that inexpensive hardware is finally available, and that the fields of computer science and construction science are fundamentally merging. That's a really big conclusion that we have to arrive at. The biggest construction science departments in the country are hiring con computer science professors for their departments right now. I speak to a lot of those departments. They're hiring two, one to two comp sci profs in a com construction science department because our fields are merging. So what are we doing? Because I thought I'd talk about use cases. You know, the, our most recent product was called Smart Reality. It's a construction augmented reality app. You can go download it right now on both app stores, Google Play and the App Store. Um, this is a great use case, business development. A huge percentage of contractors and owners are using Smart Reality right now to actually win more business. This is a, a condo project from Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin. It's a condo developer that's out using this to sell more units. Evidently, students don't like living in dorms anymore. They want to live in luxury housing. And so they use this on the sales site to lease these luxury condos to 18-year-olds who don't feel like they should have to live in a dorm. And guess what? It actually works. This has been the most effective sales tool for this particular developer they've ever had to move units. So really exciting. The other big thing is that um, aside from using easily pitched new product projects, a uh, contractor, a recent contractor in South Carolina used Smart Reality to pitch a $70 million school board project. They walked into the pitch, handed the school board seven iPads, and they walked around a table and looked at the model together. The contractor won the job on the spot. It's a huge business development tool. The other big use case is scheduling. We're the first solution to actually integrate with Synchro, which takes that 4D element of time and schedule and overlays it on the model and then actually overlays it on the plan. So as you look on the plan, it t shows you the model, and then you can jump to any date or time in the project schedule. Many, many, many times in the construction business, many times, they don't think through or visualize how the schedule impacts the buildability of the building. And so, example, Las Vegas, a casino, built a giant pool complex and made it physically impossible for them to bring materials to the hotel they were building on the other side of the pool. So they had to build a million dollar bridge to cross over the pool complex they built to bring, yes, a million dollar bridge that they tore down at the end of the job. If they would have visualized the project schedule, they would not have had this problem. Right? So scheduling is the second use case. First one's business development, second one's scheduling. The third one is to show construction professionals what it's supposed to look like before it's built in the place that it's going to be built. The other thing that people are using smart reality for right now is uh, wall sections and details. You see that one over on the top right. You can actually place that wall section in the location it's going to go, right, and then put it on the spot it's going to go and then show them. Historically, if you drive by a job site, you'll see a, a wall section on the front of the job site. People come in reference to make sure it actually looks correct. But now you can actually do it with AR. And of course, this shows a building and peeling away different layers and then showing the wall section. This is an old video. Anybody who's anybody in AR knows who VTT is in Finland. So absolutely changed my life. Thank you, VTT. So yes, you're VTT. You guys changed my life. It's awesome. So, so a fantastic research institute. He could probably explain it better than I could. So, and uh, this was, this was the, the video that actually changed it all for me in 2010 is the oil refinery where they actually scanned an oil refinery and then augmented it with a, a new development. I mean, it was mind blowing and anyway, we can show it later because I don't have enough time. And um, what we're doing next, so that's what's happening now. Uh, what's going on next is we actually got uh, the same platform, Smart Reality, and, and we haven't announced this yet, so this is the actual announcement. We got it to work with Oculus Rift. So you can actually take the same model that you built for your iPad and Android and you can deploy it remotely to a Windows-based application. And we actually merged it with Soft Kinetic Sensor. Anybody from Soft Kinetic in here? So Soft Kinetic's got a great sensor array, great SDK. We smashed it all together. And uh, we can actually walk through all the smart reality models. And uh, we use our hand 
to touch two fingers to open the doors and we can reach in and grab furniture and move and rearrange furniture in virtual reality. And so we're really excited about this for business development and what we have going on there. Um, you know, we're excited about the fusion of AR and VR and having one unified cloud-based platform that pushes the model out to both at the same time. And the really exciting things we got it working and we're actually using it in the field with multi-billion dollar companies and it's actually selling stuff. And so, um, you know, because I'm a businessman first and a technologist second, and so I'm excited because it's actually generating revenue, which is, which is always nice. Um, so this is actually me using my hands with the soft kinetic sensor to pick up a TV and relocate it to another part of the living room. And so really exciting stuff with interior design. The other thing that we've actually gotten to successfully work is not just aerial video, but aerial AR. And so we, we actually built and mounted, we used our 3D printer, we built a custom mount for our iPhone. We mounted it under our GGI Phantom, built a video recorder into our AR app, la launched the app, launched the video recording, and then fly it over a job site, and we throw a marker down on the job site that's the plan, and then it can recognize it. We find 40 to 50 feet in the air, it can recognize the aerial target and render the building on the site where it's supposed to be located. We come back and save the video and email it to our friends. And so really exciting because it's aerial, it's not just aerial video, it's aerial AR. And aerial AR is badass because you can do so much fun stuff with it and you can fly through the building and you can do some really amazing stuff and there's no more video editing, no more post-processing. You can literally save and share it straight from the app. And so some really exciting stuff going on with aerial AR as well. Um, you know, of course, what I'm super excited about was Vuzix doing with hard hat mounting. I mean, that, that really, really makes me excited. But what's next and what I want to be involved in is actually bringing AR into heavy equipment because I think Trimble and Autodesk are going to do this super fast, uh, transparent OLED windshields on backhoes that can render the building on the site, can tap into ground penetrating radar and render uh, pipes that are actually being scanned so they don't hit water mains and electric mains. And they really, some bad things can be prevented with this. So to me, the penultimate solution is AR completely fused into heavy equipment so that you can render it on the windshield instead of just on a wearable. Of course, if they have contact lenses, then who cares, right? I mean, if they have contact lenses that are AR contact lenses, which we don't have yet, then we don't need that. But uh, we're not there yet. So. Um, of course, what's next in construction is you take all this and you print it out, right? This is a University of Southern California professor who postulates that he can build and print a house in 22 hours. And so what we do is um, scan, right? And then we visualize with AR, VR. We print plans, models, and parts, and then we build and print and operate the building. And AR and VR is the lifeblood of that entire cycle, and it really allows you to correct a lot of mistakes up front. Quick note about us, Smart Bids, our flagship product, Smart Compliance, another product we have, Smart Reality is in the App Store right now. Um, you can download this at jamesbenham.com. I'll take some questions. Yeah. Uh, we, are, we are almost done with the automated part. Uh, we, we actually are the official AR app of Synchro, so Tom Dungenis and I are actually finishing that up right now. That's going to be that's going to be sold through. You know, you can buy, yes, yes, you can buy. You'll be able to buy that by the project, and so you'll you know pay a fee, and then you can export directly from Synchro into Smart Reality. That's being worked on right now. Yeah, that's going to take some hardware that's not here yet. Um, so that's a visualization that somebody else did, and I'm sorry, I couldn't find the credit on who produced that video. The general idea is that you overlay ground penetrating radar with a 3D scanner so you can overlay what's, how the ground is changing as you're cutting. And then you also want to know what's under the dirt you're about to cut into. So again, the really exciting thing is sensors are getting super cheap, right? And so ideally in the next one to two years, the GPR, the ground penetrating radar, and the 3D scanners will get good enough to in real time tell you the differential between what's being cut and what's supposed to be cut. You want correct cut and fill marks, right? Other questions? Okay, thanks guys, appreciate it. Well, it definitely looks like in AEC, the stars shine big and bright, right? You know, so. Only people in Texas would finish that off with deep in the heart of Texas, by the way, so uh, with some clapping. Um, but definitely a great, great presentation. Um, looks like we're going to need a, a couple of moments to uh, set up there. So uh, 
Thanks again, James. You're, you're, you're my hero, man.